I'm Nastasha Hardis, and I am excited to introduce Worksman's new podcast, Worksman's Power with an Eye. Hi, I'm Nastasha Hardis. I have the good fortune of being a partner of Worksman's Attorneys, where I practice insolvency, business rescue, and restructuring law. And I am the host of Worksman's new podcast, Worksman's Power with an eye. It is a conversation with women in the insolvency and restructuring field. In this podcast series, I ask different women in this profession the same set of questions to distill universal truths and personal learnings. I will be speaking to Nia Khame. Tune in this week for the full conversation. I promise you that it will be meaningful and insightful. Welcome to Worksman's Power with an Eye or Worksman's podcast on women in insolvency and restructuring. I am Nastasha Hardis. I have the good fortune of being a partner of Worksman's Attorneys, where I practice business rescue, restructuring, and insolvency law. Worksman's, I'm proud to say, is a preeminent corporate and commercial law firm in South Africa. We deliver a unique client experience by partnering with our clients and giving highly specialized attention to each of our clients' matters. We deliver focused solutions and the best possible outcomes for our clients. This disciplined approach has resulted in Worksman's being regarded as one of the most innovative firms in Africa and beyond. Worksman's insolvency, business rescue and restructuring lawyers provide guidance on strategic decisions such as the most suitable of these processes and competently advise directors stakeholders, employees, and creditors during all stages of these processes. I am proud to say that I am where I am today in no small part due to the continued leadership, mentorship, and support of men in the insolvency and restructuring profession. But since the Harvard Business Review reported that women lead not by adopting the style and habits that have proved successful for men, but by drawing on the skills and attitudes they developed from their shared experience as women. I want to understand, as a woman in this profession, a partner at Worksman's and as chair of iWork Southern Africa Network, how other women lead with the insolvency and restructuring space. In this podcast series, I ask different women the same set of questions to distill universal truths and personal learnings. Today, we speak to Worksman's Neo Khame. Neo is a senior associate, the first to be interviewed in this series, in the insolvency and business rescue practice area, with particular focus on assisting and advising financial institutions and creditors in liquidations, sequestrations, opposition of business rescue applications, data and insolvency recovery actions, commercial recoveries, and residential and commercial evictions. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome our very own Neo Kwame to this podcast. It is wonderful having you join me in this podcast today, Neo. Thank you, Nastasha. I have a theory that the turnaround and restructuring profession finds you instead of you seeking it out. How did this profession find you, Neo? <laughs> um, <clears throat> it definitely found me. <laughs> Um, well, I think my story really begins um, in articles. I, When I started articles, and I started articles at a firm, small, medium-sized law firm called Strauss Daily, their head office happened to be in Mklanga. Um, And so when I got called by my then principal, she was just like, well, I see you're in Johannesburg. And I said, yeah, I see you're calling me from 031 number. Uh, how's this going to happen? And she said, well, you know, um, I'm based in Mklanga, which is our head office. And, um, you know, would you be keen to join? And I said, well, look, I'll try it out. Um, and I did a two week stint. And and that's that's that that's that was it. Um, I did my articles at a department called uh, Business Banking Recoveries. So in with that was basically your foreclosures, your liquidations, your sequestrations, mainly acting on behalf of financial institutions and banks. Um, And I didn't have the benefit of having a commercial rotation. So I've only had a litigation rotation. And I suppose it just stuck with me. I enjoyed it. and, And I still do to this day. That's wonderful. Yeah, it definitely does find you. 
Um, what does success mean to you professionally and personally, having only ever been in this profession? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, professionally, I think it is obviously um, expanding on my skill set, um, getting bigger matters. Um, as you know, obviously with us, the high profile matters are few and far between. So what I use as a marker for my professional success is one, getting involved in those bigger matters and being trusted by clients to handle those matters. And then personally, you know, I think it's uh, it's quite a difficult one, but I think it really comes with me looking back and seeing how far I've come, uh, how much I've grown in my confidence with my drafting, you know, interacting with clients and other major stakeholders. And so it's all the small wins put together that really give me personal joy and how when I see, okay, well, you know, last year, this time last year, this is where you were at and now this is what we're doing and you never thought you'd be in this space or you never thought you'd be able to do certain things. And so so I think it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's, you know, those small little wins and that ultimately, you know, amount to basically like a big win for you. What your reflection reminds me of is an adage that I've heard about a little by little becomes a lot. And that's certainly what what you reminding me of is that it's the little wins compounded over time that not just means that your professional success increases, but also your personal success. No, definitely. I don't think I can pinpoint, you know, one triumphant moment that has led me to this it's it's basically those small incremental steps and that's often what people forget they think uh you know um success happens overnight and it simply just does not it's all of those late nights early mornings um you know the the losses and your little successes that actually help you grow and become who you are ultimately become in the profession and you're always growing um and so for me it's it's, it's just a never ending journey yeah, and being consistent in that journey. And being consistent, correct. What is your best quality? <laughs> Gosh, um, I think my best quality, um, and I think it's something that you particularly need uh, within this profession, is I remain calm under pressure. I always look at, you know, the finish line, the light, at the end of the tunnel and I don't uh I, I seldom let these small little things get to me I yeah I think it's it's one of those things that I do have is remaining calm under pressure and and I can attest to that because I think I've seen you at your busiest be working until eight o'clock at night here with me and beyond and um, not necessarily on the same matter but you always seem like grace under pressure now you really do <laughs> You got it. You just got to keep it moving. <laughs> so you're obviously not a saint, but and you would have other qualities as well. What is your worst quality? I think my worst quality um, is overthinking sometimes, which in this profession is I would think sometimes is is ultimately sometimes your downfall because you need to be able to make those calls quickly. Um, and if you are too much in your head and you are or you tend to be a procrastinator or a, a perfectionist, you also tend to procrastinate as well because you just want everything to turn out perfect because and that's where the overthinking comes in as well. So I think I've learned to just let the draft go sometimes, give it to counsel and we'll see to finish but it can't always be perfect. Yeah, that reminds me of um, Danny Andropoulos, who has said to me on more than one occasion that, you know, you cannot cater for all kinds of outcomes. Sometimes you just have to go with what you believe in your gut to be the very best, supported, of course, by uh, surrounding circumstances and legal precedent and that sort of thing, and then just go with it and then deal with, deal with the consequences as as they unfold. Yes. Um, yes. So that's that's what I've, I've slowly started learning. Um, and I think particularly this year, I think I'm getting over that complex and just going with it. And I noticed, you know, a difference in all sorts of things, turnaround time and just 
being confident in that call that you make to say, you know what, I believe this to be the first, to be the best call. And if it happens that something else pops up, then we'll have to deal with it later. But you can't operate from a place where you're trying to, you know, come up with contingency plan after contingency plan after contingency plan. You have to just run with it. 100%. So how have both these qualities being steadfast and overthinking at times. How have both of these qualities served you professionally? And I would really love for you to provide an anecdote uh, for our listeners of your real life experience in this regard. Um, Actually, I'm just thinking back to one particular matter. And I mean, it's always one of those things where um, I've had members of my team saying now, just draft it, we know how you are, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just let's get this thing out. And um, I said, no, 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 I'll be, I'll be done with it um, within the next hour or so. And within that hour, uh, because I am so pedantic and I'm always fact-checking, we realized that we could not pursue the avenue that we were pursuing. It was actually for a sequestration of a trust. And I said, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. One of the trustees was actually deceased. And the other, it has turned out, is actually sequestrated. And so at the time that the agreements were actually concluded, there was no authority um, Mm. on behalf of the trust. And I said, listen, let's just hold up on this. And and, and then from that, we actually had to steer the matter in a completely new direction. But it was as a result of actually me being the pedantic person that I am, overthinking and going back and looking at things that we actually ended up uh, saving client a lot of money and embarrassment because, you know, I went back and and actually checked. So, you know, there's a benefit. And then there's, you know, obviously the the disadvantage of being a person who (laughs) overthinks. Uh, But in that case, I was actually, um, I was actually able to help client, you know, in going or pursuing a, a litigation in circumstances where we would have actually lost. Yeah. It, it, for me, it's not necessarily saying I'm going to work on abandoning my worst quality altogether. It's about possibly finding a middle path where all your traits and all your qualities come together to serve you, but not on extremes. So it's on the one extreme, you might never have gotten anything out because you were nitpicking but on the other and on the other extreme you may be so um gung-ho that you just went with it because you needed to get something out it's about finding that middle ground um so that all your qualities serve you at the end of the day yeah i think basically it's knowing when it is serving you and the particular situation that you're in and also sometimes you need to know when you're being your own worst enemy and knowing when to stop um, and obviously letting go and just dealing with the situation. So it is a fine balance. Um, and I just find that over time you you learn to, you know, um, find that middle ground, as you say. Yep. Has anything ever gone wrong for you professionally, Neo? And if if so, how did you grow from it? What did you learn? Um, I can think of one instance. <laughs> Um, I was reported to the Law Society um, (laughs) and it was in respect of a very massive matter that I became involved in um, as a junior associate. I think my first year actually at starting at Worksman's and just start uh, being fresh in the profession. Um, I was dealing with this matter and it was very contentious. Um, It was a liquidator and the shareholders and directors ultimately had it in for me because obviously they see you as the person that is the reason why this is all happening to them. And the uh, one direct and shareholder actually reported me to the Law Society. I mean, the complaint was frivolous. There was no legal basis to it and it was ultimately withdrawn. But to go through that something like that while still very early on in your profession. I mean, I've only heard of my principals and other directors being reported to the Law Society. And when it happened to me, I thought, oh, my goodness, I cannot. And um, and you just learn that, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, you have these people that are completely vindictive and vexatious um, and will say all sorts of things about you in, um, in, in affidavits and court papers and all sorts of things. But it's it's and, and you feel like you're you're it's an assault on you personally 
But then what I realized is that with litigation, there's always a strategy and that just so happened to be their strategy. And so you just have to deal with it. I mean, at the end of the day, as stressful as it was and as worried as I was that this was just going to be, you know, a black dot on my record. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, what if one day I want to join the bar? Or what if I want to join the bench and this thing comes up and it's just complete nonsense? But then again, as we said, you'll deal with it when we get to that point. And so I dealt with it. Um, so, yeah, I think <laughs> that was definitely one of the moments I thought, oh, my gosh, what is this? <laughs> that must have been so, so scary. And also, I'm pretty sure you must have taken it quite personally. Looking back, you can you can kind of disassociate it as their strategy and and you just unfortunately being in the firing line. But at that point, it must have been super scary. And you must have really thought to yourself, your your career might come to an end. Definitely. And what, what I can say is that that's when um, a support system comes into play. And so, you know, I have my director or my team leader, Fricky, that said, look, we're going to take care of this. Um, I had counsel behind me helping me draft my response to the Law Society complaint. I had clients saying, we know you didn't do this. <laughs> and this is absolute nonsense. And they said, look, whatever you need from us, we'll cover the costs of this uh, Law Society complaint. Let's just get it out of the way. So it was really having everyone rally behind you and saying, look, we're going to deal with this. Um, that sort of helped. And I wasn't alone because if I, I thought, I think if I had to deal with that alone, it would have been a different situation uh, just in terms of how I would have dealt with the matter. And personally, what sort of support did you have um, at home and on a personal level? Or was it, or could they not relate? Um, so luckily for me, my parents, they, within their respective jobs, they have to, they deal with the law and they have a good sort of, knowledge of how things work. Uh, so my dad is like, ah, oh, you know, nonsense, you'll deal with it. My mom was a little bit worried. She was just like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? And, you know, is <laughs> what, what is your boss is doing? It's like worksmen's behind you. And I said, no, don't worry. I've got the support system there. And they were like, no, well, I mean, it's fine. Um, and my partner as well said, you know, it, you know, this this matter of yours needs to come to an end now. It's, <laughs> it's one thing after the other. <laughs> And he's really seen me through it. I mean, the late nights, the early mornings, the urgent applications being launched on a Friday afternoon and cancelling plans because you need to deal with this. So I think um, personally as well, yeah, I think that the support system at home from my parents, my partner, friends as well, um, really help. And colleagues. Yeah. And colleagues, other colleagues as well at Worksman's and other law firms that I do have, they were like, oh, we've been through it. Don't worry. They're not going to take it seriously. So that sort of <laughs> helped. And it, it sort of actually ended up becoming a running joke. <laughs> a rite of passage as you will. <laughs> well, exactly. I was going to say, it's like a, a certificate from the School of Life, right? You have, <laughs> you've earned it. You've passed that exam. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So what advice going through everything and coming to the stage in your career now, what advice would you give your younger self if she were to come into this turnaround and restructuring profession today? Um, keep doing what you're doing. It is going to yield a result. Um, never stop being brave. Take those chances. Um, I mean, when I think about the trajectory that my career has taken on, um, it was really one of those things where taking a chance on myself and just and just sort of uh, having that confidence to know that, you know what, you do know what you're doing. You've studied for this. You've dealt with these matters efficiently. And yes, it, you will feel lonely at times because it is such a male dominated industry. But just go with the roll with the punches and trust yourself. I mean, when I think about how I ended up coming back to Johannesburg, it was because I was doing some um, correspondence work for Hogan Lovells at the time. And it just, that experience also just showed me that you don't get a first chance, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And so when you do your job, do it well, because you never know who's watching. Um, and that is where I got the opportunity and I was approached to say, look, what are you thinking of doing after articles? We'd like to offer you an opportunity to come and join us um, at Hogan Lovells. And that's how that happened. And then as well, how I ended up here at Worksman's is I subpoenaed uh, Fricky, who happens to be my team leader's uh, biggest client. <laughs> and um, 
is it just you've got guts, eh? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, um, you didn't care who you were talking about. And it was actually for a 417 inquiry that I was do- dealing with. It was my first one. And my boss at the time had actually left the firm. So I had to start running this 417 inquiry. And I just thought to myself, and I spoke to the commissioner who actually happens to be a good um, mentor of mine now. And also accounts that I use regularly. But I mean, but at that time, I didn't know him from a bar of soap. And I approached him in the morning before the inquiry. And I said, I don't know what I am doing. I feel like I am out of my depth here. And <laughs> and he's like, you know what? I'm going to lead you through this thing. If I see that you're going and you're going in the wrong direction, don't worry. And at the end of the first sitting of the inquiry, he said, when did you start? When did you start practicing? And I said, six months ago. And he's like, are you kidding me? I feel like I've been here in front of a seasoned attorney. Um, You've handled yourself impeccably well. And you know what? You have nothing to worry about. You obviously know this matter inside out. You've done your research. And for me, that's what it goes to show is that when you put your best foot forward, something will happen. So I suppose just continue working as hard as you are. Nothing happens and it's not all in vain. Where does this wisdom and confidence come from now? Um, I don't know about the wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think um, in terms of the wisdom, actually, I can accredit that to having a role model in my parents, particularly my dad. Um he really is one of those people that he's the first person that I go to whenever I need career advice or life advice. And he just has a way of showing me or showing me that there's a different way. He always shares, or he always gives me a different point of view to look at. And I'm so glad that I can rely on his counsel when I'm, whenever I feel like, you know, this thing is not working out or I'm frustrated or whatever. And he always shows me, he's just like, you know, the problem with your generation is that you think everything happens <laughs> overnight. And so, He's just like, just relax um, and do this. It's not going to happen overnight, but it will happen. And when I'm when I am taking the wrong course, he, you know, gently steers me back into the right course and says, no, I don't think you're thinking about this strategically. You're being emotional. Um, You know, just keep your keep your head up. And yeah. Uh, So I think from a wisdom and, and confidence perspective is that my parents have always said, you know, whatever you want to do, you 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 go ahead and do it. If if it's about finances and, you know, let us know what we need to make you make, what you need us to do to make your dreams and reality. Um, and, and so I think, yeah, the confidence really comes from home. I think when you are given that opportunity and platform to just be who you are, it goes a long way. And it all starts from home, I always say. Well, I hope your parents listen to this podcast because I think they've done an a exceptional job. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me that all the time. <laughs> well, I don't need to tell them. I think they know. <laughs> what are you working on creating for yourself right now? Nick? I think at the moment, I think it's cementing a place for myself in the actual practice area that we have, uh, making a name for myself. and also growing a platform for other young black girls that look like me that don't know that it's actually possible to break into a practice area that is so white male dominated and to let them know that it's possible. Um, I think really that is what I am looking at doing for now. Well, I, I hope that this goes some way towards achieving that goal. Uh, Neo, thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. It was lovely chatting to you and we'll chat soon. Thank you, Nastasha. I'm Nastasha Hardeth and you've been listening to Worksman's Power with an Eye. To keep up with Worksman's Power episodes, subscribe on Apple Podcasts and follow Worksman's on LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter for updates. Worksman's Attorneys. Keep us close.